Welcome to the Musquamacut Beach Podcast, a podcast spotlighting the businesses, newsmakers, events, and memories of Rhode Island's historic Musquamacut Beach. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Musquamacut Beach Podcast. It is Fall Fest week, um, one of the best weeks of the year in Musquamacut. Um, and I am very excited today to be bringing you one of the biggest guests that we've ever had on the show, which makes three in a row, with the ex- with the exception of Caswell Cook, of course. Uh, um, and uh, that is John Ford Coley, the legendary uh, singer, songwriter, musician, actor, uh, John Ford Coley. He is going to be at Fall Fest Friday night, uh, September 13th, which is this Friday. And um, I'm very excited that he was able to uh, spend some time and talk with me. And um, it's a great conversation. Uh, We talk a lot about his career and, um, of course, uh, most famously with England Dan and John Ford Coley. And um, just just a number of hits. Uh, And um, so so we get into that and uh, just a, a fascinating conversation. And he is kind of a favorite in Musquamacut Beach these days. <laughs> um, so we, we cover all of that. And uh, without further ado, here is John Ford Coley. Okay, so I am here with John Ford Coley, a uh, world-renowned um, singer, songwriter, musician, um, actor, uh, composer for film and television. Is there anything that you haven't done, uh, Mr. Coley? Uh, I have not become president yet, but I, you know I'm thinking about it. There you go. I would. I I think I would vote for you at this point. Okay, cool. Yeah, we we need a lot of pie. That's yeah. for sure. I'm just thinking. Look, all the world's problems would get solved over a slice of pie. I I think that that's a great idea. Um, so you are going to be uh one of the headliners at Fall Fest um this weekend, and you are going to be there Friday. September 13th at 8.30, uh, and you are no stranger to Musquamica Beach. Um, I know you live in Nashville, but uh, but I, b- I believe you live in Nashville at least, but, um, you know, Musquamica's uh, sort of become like a second home for you, um, and we love having well, you. You know, it's really beautiful up there. I enjoy coming up. And if nothing else, I just like saying the name, Musquamica. I mean, come <laughs> on. That, that's a cool name. It could be something like Denver. Or, you know, Oklahoma City. This it just kind of rolls off the lips. I agree completely. Um, so you have had a uh, quite a storied and, and long career, um, you know, starting out uh, and, and maybe most famously with uh, your partner, England Dan, England Dan and John Ford Coley. Um, and is it true that the two of you met in high school? Yeah, Dan and I actually started off in a band together. Um, he, uh, he was already in an established group and they had a guitar player quit. And so everybody in the band wanted a keyboard player, but Dan wanted another guitar player. So I ended up coming in as as the piano player and he and I did not get along. He just didn't want me there, wanted another guitar player. So we didn't click at all. And I'm just trying to keep a low profile, man. I'm just trying not to get kicked out of the band, you know, that, that early in the game. <laughs> and so we we would uh, drive to various shows together, and we kind of discovered that we could sing together, kind of practice, you know, on the way there. So we'd sing a lot of Righteous Brothers and Everly Brothers and, and songs like that, and just discovered that we had uh, a, a natural blend. And so he would always take the lead. Dan had such a great lead voice, and I always took the harmony. And we just kind of just kind of developed it from there. Um, yeah, that's that's a really nice story. I like that you guys didn't get along at first. Um, and uh, so that that band, um, which I believe became Southwest FOB, right? Right. Actually, we were, we were Playboy Spy, and then became Bass Few. You know, we were just trying to keep up with the times, and things were a little bit weird. Yeah, and. Uh, but then we went to Southwest FOB, and uh, and that band had quite a bit of success um, before before you started the duo. Um, is that true? I mean, I, I saw that you guys uh, split the bill with some big names. 
Yeah, we actually were able to do a lot of different things. We had a song called Smell of Incense, and uh, that song actually was a very big uh, regional uh, uh, hit, and then it got on the national charts. That's what number 66 or 63, something like that. And, uh, and so it opened a lot of doors for us. We opened for people like Three Dog Night and Led Zeppelin. Uh, who was the other? Love. Um, the, you know, the, the bands would come through Dallas and they would just kind of peg us for an opening act because they thought we were drawing tickets. Right. That's, I mean, that's a, that, that's a good situation to be in. Um, Absolutely. So, so then what made you guys, uh, split off into, um, what became England Dan and John Ford Coley? I think at that time, you know, we, we had been playing for a long time. We started off kind of playing Beach Boy things and then graduated up to all the songs that were current on the radio, then jumped up to the Soul era uh, with Wilson Pickett, and then we jumped over into the Psychedelic era. Then we actually ended up kind of playing blues and fusion jazz uh, towards the end of it. We just kind of got tired, you know, just wanted to do something a little bit different. And... Um, uh, Simon and Garfunkel and, and, you know, James Taylor and, and groups like that were kind of popular at that time and we were following suit. So that's pretty much how we ended up doing it. I like it. And, and the result obviously led to a bunch of, uh, classics that, um, that everybody knows and loves. Uh, maybe most famously, um, I really want to see you tonight. Um, and uh, what's it like? So that that uh, song, I believe, reached number two on the Billboard charts. Um, yeah, that was a real surprise to us. You know, <laughs> it's, it's like, we we really were kind of blown away by it. You know, the thing is, is all those years we've been opening for a lot of people. Uh, Chicago, and again, we're back to Three Dog Night again. Nelson John took us to uh, to England with him for a month. It was you know, it, it was a lot of things that were going on. Carol King. And um, so we were just trying to continue to work, you know, keep our keep our hat in the ring, so to speak. And um, then this thing came along, and we did it. And son of a gun, we just kind of scratched our heads after <laughs> that point all the time. That's that's um, it, it's nice when you're not you know expecting that sort of success. I think that that's uh, I think that adds to it a little bit. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's a song and all of your songs, um, especially from that time period are, uh, are songs that are just constantly played on the radio still, um, especially, you know, here in Westerly, uh, and, and especially during the summer, you know, anytime you walk into a store, um, it seems like one of your songs is on the radio, uh, at some point. And, um, do you... How do you feel about the the feel of being adopted by like the um sort of like the beach crowd and uh and how do you feel about the term yacht rock? <laughs> yeah, you know, I the first time I actually heard of that was uh with Mark and Brian in Los Angeles. They said they'd go out on the boat and they would play our music really loud. And this this was a heavy rock and roll station. And I said, You go out on the boat and you play our music really loud. I mean, that's, that's funny right there. But, I mean, you know, it's, it's, Yacht Rock, that's fine, doesn't bother me at all. It's, uh, it conjures up a, you know, a certain thing. And I like playing by the beach. Uh, so, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's fine with me. It's great, as a matter of fact. It's kind of kept, kind of working all these years. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I personally, uh, you know, I, I, think that I, I i was first introduced to your music on a boat literally um it wasn't a yacht really? it was a, yeah it was a pontoon boat in uh, in north carolina but my uncle would um would would play uh your music and um some some others uh contemporaries of the time and uh so i th- i i understand the, the feeling behind it um but uh but you know it's just great music and i think that that's the point um and and it wasn't meant for that but it's nice that it was adopted um, by those people. Uh, so after England Dan and John Ford Coley, you got into some acting. Um, how did yeah. that, how, how did that come about? And, uh, and you know, did you enjoy it? You know, I love the acting part. 
Uh, what had happened was I had a friend, his name was Alex Rocco, and, and I knew him as Bo. And he was the guy that played Mo Green in The Godfather. He got, he's the guy on the massage table. He yeah. shot me oh, out. Wow. And so he and I were buddies. Wow. Well, his son, Mark, was wanting to be a director. Right. And, and so he's calling in favors. You know, everybody he pulled in Steve Rails back, played Charles Manson and Helter Skelter, pulled in uh, Joe Pantoliano from, so who went on to The Sopranos and, and, uh, you know, just a bunch of people. So then I ended up getting the gig as, as uh, the drummer in the band. They had to learn how to play drums. They, they gave me <laughs> drums, and I sat there and would play the songs. And uh, what was so interesting about it for me was that I learned those songs from the top down to the bottom. I could, I mean, you start that thing at the top, and I could play right through it. And it was all the, it was all the, the fills and everything else. Well, we get up and the first day that we play one of the songs, they said, okay, we're going to start at the second course, the second line on the second course. And I went, what? Well, whoa, wait, wait a minute, man. I know this thing from the top to the bottom, you know, but we play it down so I know what I'm doing. And so they played it down and I clicked into what I was doing. But, uh, I mean, it, it was great. I had some great experiences with that. But what I really loved about it most was that you put a lot of day players. And so you'll have somebody come in for two days, three days, four days, and then they're done. And so right. a lot of times they don't, even, they don't even meet the other people in the, in the film. So there was this one girl, and it was, uh, it, of all people, it was Bruce Springsteen's sister, Pamela Springsteen. And so she and I, she had like two days where she's the girl in the band and we end up firing her, but she doesn't know it. She comes in and just sees the other girl that's auditioning for the band, Mary Catherine Mary Stewart. And uh, so she and I, Pam and I just got along like brother and sister. We just like connected. Well, we're talking that first day, and she says, you know, I'm really trying hard to get out from under Bruce's shadow. I'm, I'm studying very hard. I'm trying to become believable and, and taking all these acting classes. And she just carries on like this. Well, the next day she comes in, she runs up to me, and she goes, John. She said, I talked to my brother Bruce last night. He said he knows your music, loves your music, and he'd love to get together with you, maybe write sometime, maybe play, play something or sometime. And he told me to give you his telephone number. And I said, really? She said, no, I was just acting. But did you believe me? <laughs> I was, I, you're going to die, girl. You know, was, so, I mean, it was great running across people like that all the time. That's amazing. When did you get into composing? Composing, Speci you mean like writing songs or? No, specifically for film and television. Uh, probably uh, not too long before that. We were kind of, a lot of the songs that we had done, they were putting in films. And they still do that. And then uh, when I really started writing for one was a film called... Uh, Oh, gosh, we're, the, the Spy Within. Oh, no, The Flight of the Dove, that's what it was. They changed the name of it. And it was Steve Burrell's back, and, and he directed it. And Teresa Russell and, um, oh, gosh, I can't think of the guy's name. He played an urban cowboy. And uh, Scott, Scott uh, anyway, um, so I, I called Steve up and said, Hey, Steve, you, you want to go, you wanna go uh, shoot some pool? And he goes, oh, man, he says, I'd love to, but, but unfortunately, he says, I'm, I'm, I'm directing this film, and I'm looking for stuff, and, and I've got I've to finish that up. And I said, do you direct a film? And he said, yeah. And I said, you need any music? And he said, as a matter of fact, yes, I do. He said, what do you got? And I said, I got some stuff. And he said, well, meet me over here at 3 o'clock. And I went, all right. And I got off the phone. I went, damn, what have I got? You know? So I went over <laughs> and showed him a couple of songs. And he went, man, I like that one. That would fit here. And this one would fit there. So then we ended up writing a couple of songs for him. And, uh, you know, right time, right place. 
I don't believe in coincidences at all. So it was supposed to happen. And then I just ended up putting a lot of films, uh, a lot of songs in films. That's amazing. Um, so now you're spending, uh, am, am I correct that you're spending most of your time in Nashville these days? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I live in the Nashville area. I, we lived in, um, we were kind of back and forth between Nashville and South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, for about five years. But uh, we finally said enough of so many people moving down there, and here we are, came back. That's great. Um, so I, I love Nashville. It's one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, so we are excited to have you at Fall Fest Friday, September 13th at 8.30 p.m. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I really appreciate you doing this interview. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. I enjoy talking to those guys. I'd love to see everybody come out and play. Miss Formick is a great place. We've done the beach so many times and uh, done Spring Fest and Fall Fest uh, several, several times, as a matter of fact. And Yeah, you have, and, and uh, people keep asking to have you back. I mean, everybody everybody loves you down at the beach. Um, you know, and and no one more than Caswell, who I think might be your biggest fan in the world. I, I think I think they have us down there because I tell a lot of stories and a lot of jokes and things, and they just like to like to hear my accent to see if they can figure out what I'm actually saying. So I'm from the <laughs> south, so yeah. I tell everybody if you need me to, I can't speak quicker. So <laughs> oh, oh no, we don't need you to. Um, but you, uh, absolutely, you're, you're a fantastic storyteller, and this interview has been a delight. Oh, thank you. No problem, thank you very much, and, uh, so we'll see you Friday night, it's just two days from now, and this interview will go up later today. That's great. So, um, thank you very much, and, uh, we'll see you at the beach. Sounds good, man, look forward to meeting you. Thank you very much. For more information on the events and businesses in Musquamacate Beach, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and at Musquamacate.org.